you know, you look at this Dolphins team on paper, right, and you see a defense with a lot of big names, a lot of draft capital that has been put to decent use, and a young quarterback in his first full season. It's kind of reminiscent of the 2019 Bills, but so far after week one, it's been anything but. What's the cause there? Yeah, you know, I actually I made that correlation, I think, the last time I was on the show is that they reminded me a lot of the 2019 Bills. And I think I was a little misguided by that. Uh, obviously, Tua's injury in week two kind of, I don't want to say derailed the season, but it definitely threw it off track. I don't think this offense really grew with Jacoby Brissett under center. But the main difference between this year's Dolphins team and that 2019 Bills team is this is a far worse offensive line and they don't have a quarterback to overcome their deficiencies. They don't have a Josh Allen who can kind of take the ball in his own hands. He can stiff arm a defensive tackle or two and still get a pass off. So the other thing too, with week one, you get a bounce there that goes the right way and the Dolphins are one to know. Some of these games have just come down to a bounce or a last second field goal or whatever it may be for Miami going the other way. So on one hand, you look at that interception and you could say this team could be winless, but they could also already have had three or four wins at this point. Is this kind of beating the team itself over the head that they keep losing these close games? Yeah, you know, you can you can kind of make that argument that like, OK, like they're losing close games. It's better than being blown out, blah, say blah. And I'll believe that against a team like the Raiders. I think that's a, you know, uh, an overtime loss by a field goal. That That's a, a loss you can hang your hat on. Not to the Jaguars, though, and not to the Falcons at home. Those are bad losses no matter how you cut it. And I think it is a little demoralizing when you go back-to-back weeks of not being able to finish a game. And and they had the spirited comeback last week against Atlanta, and then first two plays of the next drive. Pitts, 23 yards. Pitts, 28 yards. Field goal range, and the game is over. So it, it, it is a little demoralizing, I think. And it's not going to get any easier, once again, against a Bills team that's outscored them 91-26 to over their past two outings. That's not exactly your bounce-back team. Let's go to the other side of the ball now. This defense was very much heralded, big names at all three levels of it, and they're gashed by the Falcons. And they just seem to keep getting gashed at the worst possible times. What is going on with this defense? Statistically, they're almost in the basement. Yeah, and I I like what you said there at the worst possible time, because if you go back to the 2020 season, you know, based on what you hear about Miami, you would think that they are this top 10 unit as far as yards per game goes. And that's not true at all. They borderline hemorrhaged yards. They were, you know, bottom third in the NFL in passing yards per game. They still allowed 116 rushing yards per game. It's nothing spectacular, but they came through in critical situations. They were the number one defense on third down last year number one in takeaways number eight in scoring like number i think 11 in in red zone so they're bending but they're not breaking this year they're doing both they're bending they're breaking they're snapping they're crumbling whatever you want to adjective you want (laughs) to throw on there they are doing it man like dead last in, in yards per game so they are hemorrhaging yards badly and they're also dead last on third down. So they can't stop yeah, people from moving down the field. They can't get off the field on third down. And they can't stop them from scoring touchdowns in the red zone. So, I mean, those are like the three deadly sins right there. So I have a Mad Lib for you. Blank will win this game because blank. The Buffalo Bills will win this game because they're better. And that's, I mean, there's not really much else you can add to that. It's statistically speaking, on either side of the ball, the Bills look are a top 10 team in basically every important category. This season in Miami, starting to spiral a little bit. Trade rumors are starting to swirl even louder. And it's just not, like you said, this is not the week to get right. Matter of fact, I think Miami is the get right team.